Welcome to this video on surgeon ergonomics and patient positioning during ophthalmic surgery where I intend to give you some practical tips to maximize your comfort as well as the comfort of your patient during ophthalmic surgery. These principles also applies to other types of microscopic surgeries. So why ergonomics important? Well, poor posture can lead to significant disability, poor productivity, and possible and possible early retirement. So not only it causes short-term muscle fatigue and tiredness, it can lead to chronic disabilities. In fact, there are plenty of evidence from different parts of the world to highlight these facts. In a national survey, 64% of UK ophthalmologists reported significant back pain. A similar survey of 697 American ophthalmologists reported neck, upper and lower back pain, of whom 15% actually curtailed and changed their work pattern as a result. Other studies from India and Middle East also highlight this problem, with 71% of Indian ophthalmologists, 80% of Iranian ophthalmologists, and two-thirds of ophthalmologists in Saudi Arabia reported back problems. Good surgeon ergonomics and correct patient positioning are two important factors to make surgery as easy as possible for both the patient and the surgeon and likely to lead to better outcome. In fact, I attribute these two factors to my own success with doing 25 cataract surgeries on a routine NHS list and this will be energetic and continue to enjoy the rest of the day. So what does good ergonomics entails? It actually involves careful and meticulous adjustment of many moving parts within the operating chair, the surgical microscope, and the operating table, as well as, of course, good patient positioning. We can see the movement of the chair are up and down, seat tilt, and adjustment of the backrest. Modern operating tables are incredibly versatile and should make it possible to position any patient comfortably. Surgical microscope also has many moving parts that need exact adjustment, which we will cover in details. Now I will go through each equipment and explain how to best achieve a neutral position to maximize comfort. First, we start with the operating chair. Ideally, make the seat parallel with the floor so there is no tilt to the seat itself. However, if you are a very tall person, you may find a slight tilt backward helpful and vice versa for someone with a shorter stature. Ensure the backrest is set to provide optimal contact with your back. Ideally, this needs to be straight with no tilt. Now, what you need to do, pump the chair slightly higher than you need to and sit on it. Put your feet on the foot pedal before adjusting the height. Now, gently go down until your knees make an angle of between 90 to 110 degrees. Never make the angle less than 90 degrees as this will raise the legs at hip joint and increases the load on your foot and make it almost impossible to operate the foot pedal properly. Also ensure your back is straight and touching the backrest. The spine should make an angle of, again of about 90 to 110 degrees as well with so this the angle between your spine and your hip should be between 110 degrees. Again ensure the angle is never less than 90 degrees which means do not lean forward as this will significantly increase the pressure on the lumbar spine. The second equipment to adjust is the surgical microscope. Here there are four adjustments you need to make before bringing the patients in the operating table. First, ensure the tilt of the microscope is right for your surgery. For most surgeries, I recommend keeping the microscope perpendicular to the floor so there is no tilt to it. After this, set the eyepieces to match your glasses prescription or to zero if you have no prescription or wearing your contact lenses or glasses during the operation. For young ophthalmologists who tend to accommodate, they may find it helpful to dial note 0.5 to note 0.75 to relax accommodation. However, I will intend to do another video talking about this and focusing microscope in more details. Thirdly, adjust your IPD. 
If you do not know your IPD, then start with a wider IPD and slowly decrease this tail in focus from both eyes. This way, you would decrease the risk of inducing accommodation by initiating convergence. Again, more on this in my next video. And the fourth thing to adjust on your microscope is the angle of the oculus, which is incredibly important as well. Either have this parallel to the floor or slightly upwards. This will ensure you have a neutral position of your neck, but also looking slightly down gaze, which is more comfortable for your eyes while operating. But be careful not to tilt this too much up, otherwise it will force you to significantly flex your neck. As a general rule of thumb, for every inch that head is held forward, the weight on the cervical spine is approximately doubled. So this causes a significant problem on the cervical spine if you have the microscope tilted too much up. Try to avoid having the microscope angling downwards as well, because this will cause a lot of strains on the neck as well, and leads to very large palpebral fissure as the eye gazes upwards and wide open. This could lead to ocular aberrations and poor quality image as the blink rate is already significantly reduced during microscopic surgery. Now the fifth thing to adjust on your microscope is the height of the microscope. However, this should be done while the patient is on the operating table and really when the patient is on the operating table that should be the only adjustment you need to to make just bring the microscope to your eye level also make sure you optimize other adjustments such as filters and red reflex however again i will talk about this in more details in my next video the third and final step is to optimize the operating table position for maximal patient comfort for most patient it is best to start with the bed in a flat and low position. A low position of the bed is important for two reasons. One, it makes it easy for patients to get on the bed. And secondly, it standardizes the procedure so that theater staff will always know to pump the bed up in one direction to get the eye in focus rather than trying to pump up and down to find the sweet spot. Now get the patient on the bed and adjust their position particularly their head position. Pillow under the knees can, it can be extremely helpful for many older patients. Most patients, when they lie down, they tend to lift their chin up uh, slightly, as you see in here. Ask them to drop their chin and adjust their position until they are as comfortable as can be. Check the head position. Looking actually at the cheekbone, and the eyebrow is a particularly good way to get the head leveled up. So you want both the cheekbone and the elbow to be leveled up essentially. You may need to adjust the head position, uh, the head rest position. If it's still head not in great position, ask them to lift their head and let it drop in your hands. Now carefully and slowly place their head into position on the headrest. Once the patient's in an ideal position, bring the microscope down to your eye level and ask the theater staff to pump the bed up. Ask them to stop pumping as soon as you get gross focus. Now check your arms in relation to patient's head while your hands resting on patient's forehead, particularly your, uh, on, on the patient's forehead the elbow should make an angle of approximately 90 degrees. If you found yourself in focus, but the elbows form a greater angle than 90 degrees, for example, the, so that the hands are a little bit dangling downward, ask the staff to pump the bed up while you also move the operating microscope slightly up. At this stage, it will be very tempting to pump your chair up to reach the oculus. But instead of moving the chair, tilt the oculus slightly down so it become more parallel to the floor this should now level it up, level up the microscope to your eyes again. You need, uh, you need to do the reverse if the elbow angle were smaller than 90 degree and the arms were pointing up essentially. Always remember to avoid any temptation of changing your chair height while on microscope unless 
this is absolutely necessary because adjustment at this stage will primarily be aimed at gaining access and not comfort. If you need to adjust the chair and move away from the microscope and the bed, then adjust your chair. And finally, if patient cannot lie flat due to back problem or respiratory disorder, then start the bed with back tilted up. It is very important and this group of patients not to start from a flat or near flat position as any discomfort at this stage can have devastating effect on patients confident and anxiety level. It shouldn't really be necessary to flatten the back rest because at this stage you can use the reverse Trendelenburg position to get the head in relatively flat and comfortable position for you to operate on for example here also is very important these patients to remember a lot of time you have to move the patients up in the bed like if you see over here you can see the patients is not at the edge of the bed and again it can be very tempting to proceed with the surgery at this position but this will cause poor posture and significant strain on back as you will have to lean forward to reach the microscope instead only take a few maybe one two extra minutes to move the patient back into edge of the bed where it's comfortable both for you and the patient to proceed with the surgery and thank you very much for listening and watching this video i hope this will be useful.